So responses to second line RCHOP are varied. Usually RCHOP in the follicular lymphoma space is used as a frontline treatment, but some people will use it after failing bendamustine or rituximab. In those patients who have progression of disease in the first 24 months, as we've discussed, RCHOP might give a response, but it's gonna give a very limited duration, just like we see here in this case. The people that will do better with RCHOP in the second line are the people that had a long duration of remission to chemoimmunotherapy in the front line. So the longer the remission, the better chance that the RCHOP's gonna work. The progression that this patient had is not typical for most follicular lymphoma patients, but it does happen. And this is a very unique, important situation to understand about how to approach these patients. And that's why I think idelalisib was a reasonable choice. Another option could have been in the right patient, and maybe in this patient, albeit he's in his mid-70s, could have been to do an autologous stem cell transplant, albeit it's not typically something that we do in someone in their mid-70s. The obinutuzumab is a very important drug to keep in the back pocket, and again, as I've said, this could be something that would be used here in this setting. I think once people relapse, if they've gotten prior anti-CD20 antibody treatment, getting more of that is certainly reasonable. And I think getting more obinutuzumab at time of relapse, even as a single agent, is not unreasonable in the right patient. People will get a lot of rituximab. That's how we treat patients with follicular lymphoma. And some of the patients, albeit a relatively small number of patients, will become refractory to the anti-CD20 antibody treatment. If you re-biopsy patients, often they will be CD20 negative, suggesting that more rituximab won't be particularly beneficial. And I think those are patients in particular that we're also going to want to really think about different ways of treating them. There is uh, data suggesting that if you use idelalisib, like in this patient, if you're refractory to rituximab, that it has reasonable good activity that can be relatively durable. So like any time a patient relapse, we have to think of a lot of different parameters or factors that come into play when we want to figure out how we want to treat someone. Again, it comes back to the specific individual patient, how old they are, what their comorbidities might be, and what their treatment goals are. I think we make all of our treatment decisions on a system of mutual decision making with the patient and the family. It's commonly a discussed topic with all of those factors playing a role.